Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we're still in this functional equation course, but let's discuss what we've learned so far. So we started the course by introducing the substitution strategy. We've learned some techniques in the substitution strategy. For example, substituting with small numbers, uh, the symmetry substitution PYX. We've also talked about cancel the canceling method and the circle method. And then we moved to surjectivity, the surjectivity principle in which we've shown that our function is surjective and then use some surjectivity tricks in order to solve the problem. And in the last video, we've introduced the concept of injectivity and we've learned that a function that is both surjective and injective is bijective. And we've, uh, we solved one problem using bijectivity. So in these uh, videos, we'll be solving some cool problems in which we will apply what we've learned so far before jumping into a new theory or a new technique. So we'll be solving some simple problem, simple and medium problems, and then we will jump into a hard IMO problem. So if you're just excited as me, then let's get started. So our problem for today is from the Balkan Math Olympiad, but there is one funny fact about this problem. It actually appeared in the Balkan Math Olympiad 1997 as problem four, and it also appeared in the Balkan Math Olympiad 2000, and actually it was problem one. So it was repeated twice in the same Olympiad. Okay, so let's look at our problem. So find all functions f from r to r such that we have the following functional equation, f of x times f of x plus f of y equals y plus f of x squared. Okay, so the first thing we do when we look at this functional equation is we look at this beautiful free variable y. Can we use this y to prove both surjectivity and injectivity? Let's take a look. So to prove surjectivity, what do we need to make? Here we have f of something equals y plus f of x squared. So we've got two, we have two f right here. So we can actually fix this x and then we will, we're going to have f of something equals a surjective quantity. So how can we fix this x? By simply substituting x with zero, for example. So let's substitute x with zero. That's the simplest thing. So p zero y. Let's see, we're going to have f, this is zero, so f of f of f of y equals y plus f of zero square. So actually our function is surjective. So we've shown surjectivity because f of something equals a surjective quantity. But can we show that our function f is injective? Well, actually from the same functional equation, we can show that our function is injective. Why? Okay, because if we have f of a equals f of b, then f of, f, of, f, of, f of a is equal to f of f of b, right? Which means that the left-hand side is equal. So, uh, that means that the right-hand side is equal. So we're going to have a equals b. So if we have f of a equals f of b, then a equals b. So actually, our function is also inductive. So we can write straightforward that f is bijective. Okay, and that's already very good. So our function f is bijective. So what shall we now do in our functional equation? How can we use the bijectivity of f? Well, since our function f is bijective, then it is surjective, right? So we can use some surjectivity tricks that we've learned so far. Look at this functional equation. You can see that here we have f of x and here we have f of x. And we know that since our function f is surjective, then we can pick some number alpha and make the value of f anything we want. So the simplest thing we can make here, we can do here, is take some alpha such that f of alpha equals zero and substituting x with alpha. So we can actually get rid of this x times f of x and this f of x squared. 
and we are go going to get a very beautiful functional equation. So let's do actually this. Since our function f is surjective, then we must have some number alpha such that f of alpha equals 0. And now let's substitute x with alpha, so alpha y, we're going to have, this is 0, so we're going to have f of, f of y equals y, and this is 0. So actually we have f of f of y equals y, and actually you can compare it with this relation here to get f of 0 equals 0, right? So actually f of 0 is 0. Okay. So now we have this beautiful uh, relation, f of f of y equals y. So let's circle this. Okay, so how can we use this beautiful relation, f of f of y equals y? Actually, there is a very beautiful substitution we can do in our functional equation. So we can use this f of f of y equals y. And the idea is th the following. We are going to substitute each x with f of x, but why are we going to make our functional equation more complicated? Because we are substituting x with f of x. Actually, no, because we have f of f of x is what? It is x, right? So actually, here we're going to have f of x is going to become x, and this x is going to become f of x. So this actually, this left-hand side will be the same. What about the right-hand side? Actually, the right-hand side is now much simpler because we're going to have f of f of x, which is x. So we're going just to have here x squared. So actually, let's just write substitute x with f of x and see what we will get. So p f of x, y. So actually, this is a very common trick when you get something like this f of f of x equals x. You can always substitute with f of x. Okay. So the left hand side is the same. So we still have f of x times f of x plus f of y equals y plus x squared. So now actually we're done. Why? Because look at this and look at this. The left hand side is the same. So we the right hand side must be the same. So y cancels y, so we actually have f of x squared equals x squared. And we actually are done. Because now we have f of x squared equals x squared. Which means that f of x is either minus x or plus x. And actually, let's take a look here. Is the identity function a solution? So x squared plus y is x squared plus y. And so f of x equals x is a solution. So actually, let's write here. Let's create this solutions box. Uh, solutions. We have the first solution is f of x equals x. Is f of x equals minus x a solution? So actually here we have x squared because minus x multiplied by minus, so this is x squared, and here we have x squared, and here also we have minus y multiplied by minus 1, so this is y, so yes, indeed, f of x equals minus x is also a solution, so we have two solutions here, so we have f of x equals x, one solution, f of x equals minus x is the other solution, but are we done, or So it's a pointwise trap, ladies and gentlemen. So we need to discuss this. So actually, don't worry, because we're just going to be doing this like the classical way. We're just going to be taking, assuming that uh, we have two values. So let's just assume that we have two values, a and b, such that f of a isn't equal to minus a and f of b isn't equal to b. And that means, just the classical way, 
since f of a isn't equal to minus a, it, we must have f of a equals a. And f of b must be equal to minus b. Okay, and we're just going to be doing the simplest thing. We'll just be substituting x with a and b and y with b. So let's just do this. So p a b. Okay. So here we have a times f of a, which is a. So we have f of a square. f of a square. And f of b is minus b. So we have minus b. And that is equal to y is uh, b. So we have here b. And f of a is a square. f of a is a. And here we have a square. So we have actually f of a square minus b equals b plus a square. But remember that we know the value of f. It is either x or minus x. So we have two cases here. So we have two cases. Case 1 and case 2. So case 1 is f of a square minus b is simply a square minus b, which means that this is the same as b plus a square. So a square cancels a square, which means that b is 0. b is 0, but we said that f of b isn't equal to b, so a contradiction. Okay, so what about the second case? f of a square minus b equals b minus a square, right? And that is equal to b plus a square, which means that b cancels b, which means that a is 0, but we said that f of a isn't equal to minus a, which is a contradiction. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, the solutions are f of x equals x and f of x equals minus x, and so we are done. So let's sum up what we did in this problem. This problem was very classical because all we, what we did, we have talked about it before. So first of all, we started with this free y. We used it to prove surjectivity and injectivity. So our function f is bijective. Then we used one of the surjectivity tricks. Uh, we, we've took some alpha such that f of alpha equals zero, and we substituted x with alpha. And then we got this beautiful relation f of f of x equals x. So we substituted x with f of x in the functional equation. And at last, we just discussed the pointwise trap, which was very simple to be discussed. So this is the whole problem. So in the next video, we'll be discussing a problem in which we're going not to be handling one function, but actually we're going to be handling two functions, f and g. So if you like the video, like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and see you guys in the next video.